Welcome to Sports, everybody. I'm Jonathan Benson. Prime Minister Perry Christie is hoping that the new Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium will be completed in time for the Carifta game scheduled for next year during the Easter holiday. Some aspects of the sporting facility did not meet international standards when it was completed by the Chinese last year. And the Prime Minister says that his government is committed to making the necessary adjustments. We will fix the stadium. Okay, the government will fix Yes, because we have to do it, you know. I mean, uh, the Carifta Games are being held there in March of next year, or, you know, and during the Easter holidays. So, well, so, that, so I would imagine um, the, well, the work, hopefully the work will be, be started um, early in the new year and completed in time for the Carifta Games. Okay. Now, the Prime Minister added that his government is also looking into avenues which can help fund other sporting arenas, which will help make up the new look Queen Elizabeth Sports Center. Um, I've had discussions with um, foreign investors um, and asking them to contribute also to the sporting facilities because we expect to have a significant impact on how the sports center is managed in their facilities and it's going to um, and really to attract a lot of people who will use the facilities and come in um, to enjoy our weather and the fact that they can come and have a different environment here. So well, following a gold medal performance at the first round of FIVB World Qualifiers in Curaçao, our men's national volleyball team returning home yesterday and they were upbeat about their performance. We had a goal set to win it and advance to the second round. We did that. Um, we didn't drop a game. We won all four of our games, which is a, you know, it's a statement that we made that, yeah, we're the favorites and it's the reason why we're the favorites. Um, we're still fighting off that energy that we had um, winning the CVC championship and we just carried that on and helped us become victorious. Stayed together as a team. We ran out there and we battled for each point. It wasn't, it's nothing, it wasn't given to us. We, we ran out and we took it. Even the fans that were watching it, like, wow, these guys are really good. They, we never showed that we were down. Even when things didn't go our way, even when the referees was calling against us, we never showed, we were like, you know what, this is ours to win. When everybody played us, they stepped up their game. They tried to play it to our levels, and it was important for us not to play down to theirs, but to stay consistent and be victorious. There's no division in our team. Our team is is just one big group that likes to hang together, have fun, play volleyball, and most of all, win. It shows that um, we are ch champions and that we are not, it's just not a fluke that we won CBC and that you know we can go out there and play. Uh, we've been taking a uh, beating for a long time and now we're on top and it's where we want to stay. Now with the second round of World Qualifiers set for early next year, Team Bahamas will continue regular practice sessions as they look for a similar performance against what is expected to be a higher level of competition. Um, going into the second and third round, I think we need more, more gym time. Uh, we need more support from government. We need uh, more support for our people. Like, we need to get the word out there that um, we're doing something in the country and that uh, we need everybody to back us. We just need the support. Once we get the support and we can get the gym time, we're going to do great. We're not the most prepared for this tournament, and I feel that um, we need to do more preparation because the teams that we'll be facing in the later tournaments are going to be a lot, a lot tougher and they're going to be a lot more prepared. So I think that's important for us to get the gym time. Hopefully with support of the country, the government, our people, our family, we would make it as far as possible. Just being focused and determined, um, staying together as a unit, playing off each other's strengths, we should be fine as a team. Now after winning the best blocker award at the first round of qualifiers, Byron Ferguson headed straight back to Finland to continue with his pro career. However, our two other award winners, they both returned home. MVP Prince Wilson and best attacker Ronaldo Knowles spoke about what those individual honors meant to them. What I had to do for um, the team to win, um, I didn't think I had a great, great tournament, but I just played my part and fit in where I needed. I was actually limping around in the tournament and still came out with an award, which I didn't think was going to happen. So I just want to thank God for that and thank God for us winning. Well, the Catholic Primary School Best of Three Basketball Championships tipping off yesterday at Loyola Hall on Gladstone Road. After winning the pennant for the second year in a row, the Our Ladies Blue Flames were hoping for a better performance than they had last year in an upset loss to the St. Francis Joseph Shockers. However, in the first half, the Xavier Giants gave the Flames all they could handle. In the second half, though, the Flames relying on their go-to man, Mateo Taylor, he came through when it counted the most 
Our ladies takes game one 39-25. Taylor dropped in a game high 16 points in the win. Francisco McKinney adding 11 for Xavier's. Dante Cooper finishing up with a side high 9. Dane Saunders, he followed with 6. Bet on our defense. Um, do the players what coach assigned us to do. And it was a good side out. We come back at the lowest scoring game in the first quarter. When we come back, I need a big lead. We played good. We shared, we shared the ball. We passed and we scored. That's all we need is, and we played excellent defense. We played great today. We just had to play more defense and I think the ball more faster and play better offense. We played excellent, we, but the things we need to work on is our defense, our tempers, and our offense. You was my big man a lot and my two shooting guards and they just, we performed better. Just let it slip away. Um, Mateo just, he just took over. I mean, he was getting on once. We tried a double team, you know, he was spinning away from the double team. I mean, he was just on the night. We just lost and we just give up. We give up on ourselves today. I wasn't making too much layoffs, not too much jump shots. And the big fella from our ladies, he got away from us. You have to have confidence in your shot, have confidence in your players, and have confidence in your coach. He knows what he's doing. Don't underestimate no team and just play ball. Now game two is set for tomorrow back at Loyola Hall. A win by our ladies would give them a championship in their final year. A win by Xavier's that forces a winner take all game three. The same performance we had here today, we need to see it again. We need to blow out this team or bring it home. Because it's history we need to make. We're going to just lock down Zion, take down the rest of their players and that's it. Just have to play the, the, the same way we played today. And and they play more defense and we can carry some. Some of my guys were down after the first game, but I told them, you know, to keep their head up. It's only the first game, but we got to come back, go back to the drawing board, and come back, and I'm quite sure it will be a closer game. We need to work on the guy Mateo more and hit more layoffs. Well, several world-renowned Bahamian athletes were on hand last night for the memorial service of sports legend Thomas Augustus Robinson. Among those paying tribute was Olympian Chris Brown. He reflected on the last time he met with Robinson following his 4x4 team's gold medal performance at the Olympics. We shared stories, we laughed, and, you know, um, I, got, I finally got to, you know, be next to him and talk with him one-to-one, -one and, you know, we had a long conversation, and I spent that time that I needed to spend with him, and... And it was a great moment for me. And I told him, you know, Mr. Robinson, what you started, you're the, you're the godfather of this game. You know, we got a stadium built after you. Many of us don't even have a, a, a passport. You know, and you got a stadium name after you. You know, he's like, son, one day, one day you'll, you'll have something in your honor. Now also paying tribute to the late Tommy Robinson was former athlete Iram Lewis. Lewis worked closely with Robinson as the project manager on the National Stadium, which was named in Robinson's honor. Robinson didn't complain. He told myself, John, Anastasia, Corys, Mr. Gus Cooper, and Wendy, guys, we have to dig deep and get the job done. And that we did. Dad knew that he was terminally ill and his time was short. But however, he wanted to secure the future of those he loved. Some of you may not know how instrumental Tommy Robinson was in the success of our Golden Girls, but his friend Athema Bo has fond memories of those days as that's a bond he and Tommy shared. Uh, he took an interest in the uh, female relay team, which later on became the Golden Girls. And he and I became agents for the Golden Girls. And uh, we often said that they should name that um, gold medal the Robinson Bow Gold Medal. And, you know, because we felt so good. Uh, that, that morning in the Bahamas, uh, our time, when the girls ran, he called me. He said, they're running now. And so I jump out the bed and try to get under the bed because I, I didn't want, I wanted to see it, but I didn't know how to see it. He said, well, I am having a refreshment. I suggest you do one too. And once uh, the race was completed, he called me back. He said, well, all day I going through this, so you better be happy. Now a state recognized funeral for Tommy Robinson will be held tomorrow at Christ Church Cathedral.